This is Twit. Are you were using the beta of iOS 13, anybody here? I can't wait for the public yes, beta. What do you think? Loving uh, it. I don't Are recommend you? it. You don't recommend it, and you and Lori loves it. I, yeah, I, no, don't I mean it's great, it, but I love it. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's fantastic. But it's not like last year. There was so much effort put into uh, just optimizing everything. It was part of the big messaging. It was the flagship number one feature. Was it out, it was going to run so much better on everything? And that beta was really solid from the first day of WWDC on. This is not that. So <laughs> I, I would strenuously recommend people wait for the public beta. But the features themselves are really really cool. When is the public beta? Is it next month? They That's said July. The only yeah. wording we got. Sometime. They said next month. Yeah. yeah, I can't wait to put it on my iPad Pro. Uh, slowly, as people use the developer beta, we're getting new um, information about tips that uh, Apple did not talk about at WWDC. Uh, this is from uh, Apple. Uh, I'm sorry, from Mac Rumors. Uh, new Wi-Fi options in the control center. This has always been a pet peeve of mine: is that I open the control center and I want a long press on my Wi-Fi to get to the settings. Yep. But now you can. You couldn't before. It would just turn it off, which was not <laughs> was not what I was looking for. Uh, same thing with Bluetooth. A long press yep. or a force touch uh, on the Bluetooth icon will give you paired devices and then a quick jump to the Bluetooth settings if you want. Um, locations access is getting scaled back in iOS 13, but there's also a new option that says the app, I think this is brilliant, will have to ask every time. Now you may not want that, but you know this is a this is a kind of more refined between uh, never allow access, only allow when using the app. Uh, actually, did they get rid of always allow? I don't see that here. Yeah, yeah because there, there's just places, yeah, there's APIs for apps that really need like for turn by turn directions is that really need to have constant background access. But almost every app really only needs it when it's active. So this is a privacy. Uh, Control absolutely, and uh, ask the best the best thing about it, and I'm sure that's in the Mac Rumors list, is if an app has been using a location in the background. I think we might have talked about this. It pops up not just a request, but a map showing every point on the map oh, that it's recorded that your awesome. location, so that you can make a very visual, very educated decision about it. Yeah, that's yeah. what we need. Because honestly, I don't like all the pop-ups. I just usually say, "Yeah, let it have it. I don't care." Yeah. But it would be nice to know what it's keeping track of. Absolutely. There's now a new switch, and, and also remind you. Yes. Yeah. But also to remind you, if you if you're not really using an app anymore, oh, that's right. I I tested this out. I didn't like it. Right. And it's still collecting all this data on yep. me. I should go shut that off. Yep. Here's a switch to ignore blocked senders in email. So email now has kind of the same features you've had in uh, your phone and contacts. Yeah. You can mute threads. <laughs> Look at that mute button. I like that. Um, you can set a reading goal in iBooks. The Books app has a reading goal feature that keeps track of how long you've read every day. I want to do that. I like that idea. I'm trying to build up the number amount of uh, minutes I spend reading every day. I just wish it was additive to your day and not subtract. Like if you could just add that extra time to Wouldn't every that day. Wouldn't be nice? Not have yeah. to spend it. Well, that's what audiobooks else. are for, right? That's what audiobooks are <laughs> Yeah. Silence unknown callers. This is a really good solution for robocalls. Um, I presume when they say unknown callers, it's not callers without caller ID, but it's callers that are not in your contact list. I would hope it's yeah. that because all spam calls have caller ID. It's just spurious. Be nice <laughs> to say, hey, if that person's not in my contact list, I don't want it. Don't ring the phone. Just send yeah. them straight to voicemail. Yeah. There's a low data mode that lets you uh, reduce your network data use if you get down to uh, the last few megabytes of your data plan. Message search. People have been asking me so for this good for now. a long time. So good. <laughs> so what is it? What's different in message search? I mean, it works. Oh, that's a big <laughs> change. So like today, I was trying to. I, I work with a bunch of different people, and there's like the version of Lori for Windows Central is Al, and Al was asking me a question, and I knew that Lori and I had talked about it in iMessage, and that we'd mentioned our overall boss, Kevin. So I just typed in Kevin, chose the Lori thread, nice. went right to that message. I read nice. exactly what I needed. I pasted it in, and it was good. That's really yeah. huge. That's the kind of thing programs like Slack really make their name on is stuff like that. That the the theory is that these conversations we have in messages are permanent and we want to be able to access them because they're a resource 
So there's having, some that you want to delete immediately, if not sooner, and others that you want to keep forever. And the ones that you want to keep forever should be available to you rapidly when exactly, you want them. Exactly. Yeah, there's, you know, you you went over to a friend's house a year ago and they gave you their address and you've you've chatted yeah. with them for the last year. And then you go back over to their house and you're like, oh, now the I have to ask them again all for their the address. Up to the top of yeah. the page. I do that <laughs> and a that lot. Just and then it reloads, just, puts you at the bottom again. Oh. It's scrolling. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, there'll be uh, folder management built into notes, including yep. renaming and moving the folders. That's great. X we They mentioned Xbox and PS4 controllers. Here's how you manage it. You'll be able to... Uh, that's nice that they're going to feature it. New Animoji. Look, look, there's a mouse, a squid, and a cow. New Memoji. So cute, so creepy. Yep. Actually, I'm sorry. That's not a squid. It's an octopus. If you just count the arms, Leo, you'd know. Mm. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> only There's has... only six arms. Yeah. There's a couple of hidden ones in there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, separate emoji and globe keys. So in the past, you've had to scroll, you know, go through your, if you have a bunch of keyboards, keep hitting that globe key. But the emoji key now is right up here next to the I'm still doing bar. it wrong. I keep hitting the globe key to get the emoji and then I go, duh, every time. Oh, oh. <laughs> So clearly, this is something useful for you, Renee. Automatic tab closing in Safari. That's oh, a really so many nerds got so anxious about this. They're like, "No, my tabs!" But it's not. It's you can choose it. It's not on by default. They're right. not going to take your tabs oh, away. Oh, but I love this idea because I actually don't want all those tabs, and I'm I'm always shocked when I hit the tab button in my Safari on, on iOS, and I go, "What? <laughs> all those tabs yeah. are? They don't take a lot of memory, I'm sure, but still, I don't I don't like that." It's just clean it up. Clean it up. Attachments yeah. and calendars. What's that for? Adding uh, attachments you want to, have stuff to a calendar. Available, yeah. Oh, okay. Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, if you have a meeting, you could put the meeting notes in as an attachment. And mm -hmm. They would yeah. be right there, yeah. Uh, to update apps in iOS 13, you open up the App Store, tap on your profile, and choose yeah. apps from the pending updates section. So they've taken, the, I don't know if I like this. They took the update tab out of the app store. Yeah, for Arcade. You know, I think they they already do it like that on on Mac, on the Mac app store. So it I could see what they're thinking is to just kind of redirect you to your profile. You know, that's where kind of your personal things are. But what if I don't want Arcade? Also, Julie's Memoji is good. I'm just going to put that out there. Julie's yeah. a good Clover. It's pretty cute. I have a yeah. cute emoji with pink hair. Kind of looks like you a little bit, Lori. He can't find it. Go ahead. Press <laughs> the right button. <laughs> there we go. There it is. <laughs> uh, Safari screenshots. When you take a screenshot in Safari, there's a new option to save it as a full page. I love this oh so much. Oh, my God, which yeah. exports the entire web page as a PDF. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's not on Mac yet. I'd love it on Mac just for Final Cut Pro, but it is available on iPad as well, so I've been using it there. I don't want a screenshot. I want the page. Now yep. I can get it. Yep. You have to it's particularly given that a there's important stuff that you forget to to screenshot or capture and also sometimes this the the data that you need a year later has been removed from the internet you need a bit an ability <laughs> to actually keep it as a pdf the i've got a huge huge folder of nothing but pdfs of things that i don't even know if there's any chance whatsoever that this will be here in a month let alone a let alone a year so yeah that's such a good especially on a phone where it's like the the thing you need is here is a list of all of the ways that you can get a cab in this foreign airport you know nothing about and then of course as soon as you land, for some reason, you can't connect to the internet or something. Yes, this is such a big thing. I can't, I, I'm not installing anything until we get to the public beta stage, but I have never been so excited about putting a beta on my iPad and my iPhone. <laughs> so many new features. This one, a lot of people have been talking about optimized battery charging. It knows if your battery's getting old, it gives you a switch that says, don't charge it up all the way. Don't charge it up all the way. This is what I do. Actually, most cars with batteries do this. My uh, my Tesla and our Bolt, uh, it's generally not considered a good idea to charge the battery up all the way. They rotate charging. So it's you charge it to 80% unless you need that extra juice. And that's, that's exactly what this switch will do. The iPhone will learn from your daily routine so you can wait to finish charging past 80% until you have to. That's a great idea. Improvements in the... Home kit. We talked a little bit about that on iOS today. Micah Sargent was on. He's a, 
a HomeKit expert. We talked a little bit about the new iOS 13 HomeKit features, including the new, uh, you know, camera features, which will be great. Yeah. Photo zoom. You can photo zoom in and out of your photos tab. Zoom in and out with a pinch gesture. These are little minor ones now. Uh, time synced lyrics in Apple Music. We talked about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, up next in Apple Music, voice memos, a new pinch to zoom in the voice memo so you can zoom in on the waveform. That's nice. That's a good thing for editing waveforms. Do not disturb while driving will activate on iOS 13 while you're using public transit. That's a good idea. Don't want to take calls in the middle of a bus ride. There's quite a few. Atmos, there'll be Atmos playback. Um, popular Wi-Fi networks. Your phone will detect which Wi-Fi networks are being used and let you know if one is available. Hmm. I like this delete Facebook command. <laughs> <laughs> you, do delete face, you can delete apps Doesn't from the... Doesn't delete Libra along with it? <laughs> that would be nice. You could swipe right on the updates page and delete directly from there, which is a yeah. great thing. Because often I see... That's still updating. I didn't want that in the first place. And yeah. that's a good place to delete it. The timer's been updated. Boy, it's a lot of stuff in here. Now, this yeah. is funny. This NFC tags, which is pretty funny. People uh, said, you can now scan your passport using the NFC reader. That's something Apple has in the past locked out, but most other phones with NFC near-field communication readers we were able to do that. I iPhones will be able to read J Japanese national identity cards. Yeah. But you, that's, you a, that's that that's the big deal. It's, NFC, NFC is now way too important not to support yeah. in an API yeah. because it is really being used for uh, for border control. It's being used at uh, at uh, kiosks. It's being used in public transportation. Uh, that's a that's a good way for Apple to be left behind if they don't let developers get access to the NFC chip. And if you update to beta two of thirteen, which has just come out, did you guys get beta two? Yep, I haven't downloaded it yet. Okay. You might like this. You can unsubscribe when you uninstall an app with a paid subscription. Oh, hallelujah. This is something mm -hmm. that bothers me because I, you know, we're always showing apps. I install a lot of apps, pay for subscriptions, and then forget about it. Right. So this or is even great. even if you try that two week period, I think a lot of people will yes. be more likely to try out that two week period for yeah. something. Uh, un knowing that it'll be really easy to just automatically unsubscribe if they don't like it instead of never even subscribing in the first place because they're afraid they'll forget to unsubscribe in two weeks or a month or whenever yeah. they, a subscription ends. Yeah. So it's a really great way to, it's it's good for everyone. It's not, it is good for developers who have subscriptions because more people will be more likely to try it out. Yeah. So when you delete the app, it'll say, hey, you have an active subscription on this app. Do you think you should delete it? Yes. And they also Turn added off. the new photography in yesterday's beta. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is the new studio lighting. Yeah. That's pretty good. It's wow. really nice. And I didn't even try for this. I just literally turned it on, turned it towards me and pressed the button. So do you move oh, the point, the light source around just arbitrarily or? No, it, it's, it works the same as the previous one. It just gives you a white background instead of a black background and does a bunch of other adjustments to make it look oh, good okay. on those backgrounds. Oh. So it, can, can I, had a whole, I had a whole living room behind me. It just removed that completely. Oh, that's sweet. Can can we just start start calling that the Steve Jobs Walter Isaacson book cover <laughs> filter yeah. and just make sure That's that that idea. becomes or just canon. the Johnny the Johnny for the sure Johnny filter yeah <laughs> it really looks better to me it looks better than the black background it 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 smooths it out better so it really looks yeah. like just a nicer cleaner image the black background always seems a little bit kind of jarring to me and, and oftentimes you can just it. because the technology. Um, it's, you know, there's like your hair gets cut off weird or something like right, that. And right. the white one just seems to be just better at hiding mistakes and letting your eyes sort of like agree with what it's looking at. By the way, somebody in the chat room is pointing out that last, now that there's an uh, NFC API that LastPass can use a YubiKey through NFC on your iPhone. That's great. What were you showing us, Renee? That was... Uh, the oh, you you can edit them so you pull it like you press a button and just like the depth control you can oh, you, whoops, can, you can edit the amount of nice. the effect yeah oh, that's to really control yeah. button focus but you can control how much of the effect is applied that's which in is the really beta nice. uh, so we'll, the rest of the world will get that either if you're brave and use the public beta or you wait till September 